Here's a question for you all. When is quantitative tightening not really tightening? The simple answer to this riddle is when the Federal Reserve does it. I alluded recently to the fact that the Fed is not really tightening. Let me explain that comment. What I'm showing you here is something I don't think most people understand, even the Wall Street pundits, maybe especially the Wall Street pundits. This is a graph that I put together on the St. Louis Federal Reserve FRED tool. There are three data series shown. The two that I want you to pay the closest attention to are currency and circulation, shown as blue, and the adjusted monetary base, shown as red. Notice that the two were virtually identical leading into the year 2009, and then they radically departed. Currency and circulation continued a gradual upward climb while the monetary base took off like a rocket, and in a series of QEs, eventually hit a number a little higher than $4 trillion, while currency in circulation was only $1.2 trillion. So how was it that the monetary base could climb so high so quickly without causing general price levels to also increase fivefold? The simple answer is that the money was created, but never released into the system. You can verify this by taking a look at the M1 money supply shown on this plot in green. You can see that M1 ramped up its rate of increase, but its upward climb was still gradual compared to the monetary base. You can also see that by the end of QE3, the monetary base was well in excess of M1. This is a clear indication that the money the Fed was said to have created never made it into the system. So what happened? Frankly, what the Fed did between the years 2009 to 2014 was it shored up the balance sheets of many financial institutions by taking on a lot of completely illiquid assets. It bought these assets for newly created Federal Reserve notes, though they were only digital entries in the ledger. And to prevent the newly created reserve notes from entering the system, it put them in an interest-bearing account on deposit at the Federal Reserve itself. This greatly improved the balance sheets of the institutions that were insolvent. Now, before I move on to the next slide, let me point out a few things. The monetary base went from $800 billion to about $4 trillion. Currency and circulation went from $800 billion to roughly $1.2 trillion. So, by the end of QE3, the net divergence was about $2.8 trillion. With that said, let's take a look at the account that contains all of that freshly created QE money. The name for the account is Excess Reserves. Looky here! The excess reserves account was nearly zero leading into 2009, but by the end of QE3, it had climbed to $2.8 trillion. Isn't math fun? So what is all this talk about quantitative tightening about? Well, if we take a look at this excess reserves account, it is now on the decline. As some of those illiquid assets reach maturity, they can be exchanged for the digital Federal Reserve notes held in the excess reserves account. I'm sure some of those assets have gone bad, but not all of them. So far, the Fed has managed to retire about $1.2 trillion of these securities. It has about $1.6 trillion left to go. At a rate of $50 billion per month, it should take a little bit more than two and a half years to complete the job. Now, lest you think that I'm defending the Federal Reserve, I'm not. Let's go back to the original graph for a moment. You will notice that although the monetary base is contracting, both currency and circulation as well as the M1 money supply are continuing to rise. Thus, the Fed isn't really shrinking the money supply at all. Quite the contrary. It's letting you think that it's shrinking the money supply, but in reality, it's expanding. All that's happening right now is that the illiquid assets that the Federal Reserve took onto its balance sheet are maturing. The Fed is still buying treasury bonds with freshly created Federal Reserve notes, and that is inflationary. As a side note, while the Fed isn't really contracting the money supply, this does provide an awesome excuse for some of the highly overpriced stocks to come back down to earth. And the Federal Reserve can be made as the scapegoat. Merry Christmas, everyone. This was my 200th video and my last one for the year. I wish you all the best heading into the new year. 2019 will certainly be an interesting one.